guys and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I draw super noodle fur, which is the fur that I like to call, you know, the it's kind of like tightly curled and it's still quite close to the head. So it kind of looks like a pack of um, dried noodles, but it's really hard to do. I have just done it for the first time really, so um, I thought I'd make a little tutorial about how I kind of worked stuff out and hopefully this will help you if you encounter super noodle fur at any time in the future. And on that note, here you can see me just going in with my first highlight tone. I'm using like a deep steel blue here from Caran d'Ache and I'm just picking up where those main highlights are going to be in the end. I'm not using a bright colour for this just because you're going to save those really bright highlights until the end. And here I'm going in with a black Rembrandt pastel stick. These are really great to have in your kit because they're so much deeper and darker than any pastel pencil you'll find. And I'm just picking out where those shadows are that I can see. And we want the effect of the first kind of coming out from the skin. So all those shadows are going to really help to make this effect look realistic. What I've also done with this pastel stick is um, sharpen it down on a bit of sandpaper just so you can get a bit of a finer point on the end. And then I went in with a brown pastel stick from the same brand just to warm up those shadows and blend it a little bit more with that um, mid-tone. What you'll see me doing here now is just taking various pencils in mid-tones in different warm and cool shades. And I'm picking out the main bits in that reference photo where I can see warm tones and where I can see cool tones. So I'm using like rich browns and warm greys and then I'll be using cool blues and things like that. And then I'm just blending all that in with my finger. It's quite important to blend as you go with these layers just because you don't want all of that pastel dust to be sitting on the surface. And now I'm using more indigo blues, just really picking out where those highlights and shadows are. I'm trying not to think of it as kind of lines or specific hairs, I'm just thinking of it as like clumps of fur which are all interacting together. And now I'm just slowly building up those highlights. Using various brown colours where I can see that light coming through the hair. So as you can see here, it's starting to come together now. I'm focusing on getting some more saturation down in those colours because we can always um, go over it with some muted tones afterwards to balance that out. But I do like to get some bright colours in there where I can. And I'm now using a cool grey Carbothello pencil just to pick out where those main highlights are over those shadows. And as you can see, because we've worked in layers here, it's um it's looking quite coherent, there's no fine, there's no like sudden lines or anything like that. The Caran Dash pencils are really nice to go over the top in like the top layers because they're really soft. So they'll always go over anything you have already, whereas the Carbothello can tend to blend everything together. More blending here with my finger, and then I went in with just a dry paintbrush to blend all of those different tones together, but I'm being careful not to put too much of the dark tones over the highlights, otherwise you'll end up with quite a muddy looking result. Just continuing now with all those different colours and I'm just putting them where I see them, just really studying that reference photo. This particular dog did have some like white wiry fur on top of his curls, so I am keeping them until the very end, because obviously if you just did all of that now you just go over it straight away. And there I was just using a really small paper tortillion blender. There's loads of different blenders you can use. Paintbrushes, your fingers, paper, tortillion blenders. You can also get those colour shaper tools, I think they're called. They're like a stick with a little bit of silicone on the end. They're really good for pushing that pigment into the paper. And I'm um, just keep going over those darkest shadows just to make sure they're still as dark as I need them to be. Because every single colour you're putting on top of those is kind of a comparison to that shadow. What you really want to do as well is study the shape of each individual curl because it can be easy to kind of just do one curl, like the look of it, and then replicate it over and over again. But obviously that would really um, prevent that ear from looking as scruffy and characterised as it does. 
So really look at every single individual curl. You don't have to get it obviously to the exact hair on the details, but just an impression of that is good. Here I'm going in with some coloured pencils actually, which are sharp, sharpened to a really fine point in order to get those top details. I like to use coloured pencils just because um, they can really cut through the pastel just for that very top layer to get those really fine details. And you can obviously sharpen them to a really fine point. So I'm just using some greys. I'm not using any whites yet. That little pencil there is a... Oh, what was it? I think it's Conte of Paris. And it's a, it's a really soft pastel pen... Soft charcoal pencil. Which is really good for those end... Um, small shadows that you want to get. I don't use it in the beginning anymore just because it's quite chalky and it can make everything quite muddy whereas the pastel sticks ten tend to stay where you put them a bit more. And I'm just reinstating those blues and indigos. With these curls you only really want to pick out one highlight with each one. If you just highlighted the entire curl it would end up looking a bit fake. So you just want to get slight highlights in each curl for a really subtle shiny look. As you can see here my strokes are really small and refined. One good um, substitute for a white is a lemon yellow pastel because it can really brighten things up without looking yellow just gives those whites a bit more of a um, bright effect. Finally there I'm going in with the Caran Dash Black just to get some more hair strands down and I'm focusing on kind of separating those main bodies of curls now. Really looking at that reference photo and just refining everything I can see. Quite hard to describe what I'm doing in these kind of end stages. And there's the final results ish. <laughs> Anything I do in the beginning stages, I always end up just going over and over and over as the portrait goes on, but that's pretty much um, how I would have left it kind of 90% done. And then in the very end stages, I also went over with those white wiry hairs. I'm just slowing this bit down a little bit just so you can see it's the exact same process on that body there, which is a lot curlier. Just firstly getting in those shadows and then those mid-tones and then building the mid-tones into the highlights that you want to see. I'm actually quite shocked at how short I managed to keep this tutorial. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed guys. Oh, and I'm opening a Patreon soon. I've been saying this for ages but I really want to do it soon. Um, I don't want to just make one and then not trust myself to do stuff regularly because whenever I subscribe to people on Patreon and they do like one video a month I just get a bit bored and I end up unsubscribing. Even if they're not my favourite artist, I'm not, it just feels annoying to pay for something and then you don't really get much from it. So if I do open a Patreon, I wanted it to be like at least one video a week to let people have their money's worth kind of thing. But if you are interested, oh there's Henry. If you are interested in subscribing to me on Patreon, I'll be so appreciative and I will let you know when that comes out. Please like and subscribe if you did like this video and I will see you in the next one. Say bye Dave. Bye. <laughs>